This is Dan McGill of the Georgia Bulldog Club, which proudly presents the radio highlights of the 1980 Hunker Down Dogs, Southeastern Conference champions, and ranked number one in the land after winning 11 straight games during the regular schedule. The very first game was one of the most thrilling of the season and clearly demonstrated that the Hunker Down Dogs had the stuff of champions. They trailed 15 to nothing in the third quarter against Tennessee, but rallied to win 16 to 15. And this first game marked the debut of the most sensational freshman halfback in the history of American football, a six foot two, 220 pounder from the South Georgia town of Wrightsville, Herschel Walker. We take you now to Knoxville, Tennessee, Saturday night, September the 6th, with the largest crowd ever assembled in the South, jamming newly enlarged Neyland Stadium to 96,000 capacity. The next voice you hear will be that of Georgia's incomparable Larry Munson. Fourth and five, and young Broadway, young Jim Broadway to kick with eight men coming on him. And then the kick is good. Long, going to come down inside the 30, and we hit him. He fumbled the ball, and the dog missed it. It's rolling to 10, to 7, to 5. We fumble it again. We fumble it. It's in the end zone. Get on that ball. It's on the back of the end zone. We had three men knock it 20 yards. We'd land on it on our chest. We landed on it with our heads, and it went 20 more yards. Now they argue who got it as it went out of bounds. Tennessee touched it last. They're not acting happy at all. Twice, it was Joe Happy, the center, who cracked it out of the return man. It went 20 yards behind him. Georgia had men diving on the ball, but because of the artificial turf, it was bouncing. It kept rolling and rolling. There's a long discussion going and no sign given, though Tennessee is coming off on one side of the field and the dogs on the other, and the officials, all six of them, still talking. Safety. Well, they gave us two points, and we could have scored on the play. Very, very, very easy. People just diving on it, and it would squirt nine more yards, and somebody else would land on it, it would squirt again. This has not been a night for old lady luck. Georgia knocking on the door. They're on the Tennessee 16. Tennessee has dominated this one. They gave us a break. We couldn't use it. Then we gave them a couple. 15 to 2 Tennessee leading. Crowd roaring against Georgia trying to make them drop it so they can't hear. We hand it off to Herschel. There's a hole. 5, 10, 12. He's running over people. Oh, you Herschel Walker. My God Almighty, he ran right through two men. Herschel ran right over two men. They had him dead away inside the nine. Herschel Walker went 16 yards. He drove right over Orange Shirts, just driving and running with those big fives. My God, a freshman. 15 eight. You think this isn't big right here? Do you realize what has happened in this thing tonight? Tennessee in a 7-4, and Rex sticks it up, and it's in there good. 11.30 to play. Electric scoreboard flashing the words, defense, Tennessee trying to hang on to a six-point lead. Slap with an eye. Tennessee crashing off one side. We pitch it to Herschel. Going to get him out. 10, 8, 7, 5. Herschel, Herschel Walker. Tennessee gets the other side. We went to the short side and pitched it to that kid out of Johnson County. He got a block in front of him out around the six or seven and got inside of it and went in the corner standing. Give the guy some rest. It's 15 to 15. My God, what's going to happen in the next 11 minutes and 16 seconds? Robinson to try the extra point. Tennessee, seven men on the line. One man's going to jump in the middle. And Rex sticks it up. And the kick is good. For the first time tonight, Georgia 16, Tennessee 15. 4 22 to go. Georgia leading 16 to 15. Tennessee trying to save himself here. Balls come up to the line. Oshevsky behind it. We're in a 6 5. They put a man in motion. They pitch it to the tail. He fumbles. It rolls around. Everybody dies. I think Georgia's got the ball on the two yard line. We cracked it out of his hands. Georgia's caught the ball. About the two, it squirted up in the air and somebody dove on it in the secondary. It was it Pat McShay the end? It was Pat McShay. Pat McShay landed on it. They pitched to the tail with a man in motion and ran a sweep with a couple of blockers. He cut inside. He penetrated four yards. Eddie Weaver and Joe Crimmins hit him. Georgia's got the ball on the one and a half. Oh, God, look at the clock. 4.02 and it's on a one and a half. 
And the last time we had the ball down here, you remember what we did wrong. Georgia up to the line. Power eye. Tennessee up in there. Seven men on the line. And Buck curls over the ball, and somebody tried to blitz between Morrison and all. And look at the clock. Oh, look at the clock. They have come back, and they beat Tennessee 16 to 15. Dogs have saved themselves despite mistakes. Just, you know, it's hard to describe because Oshevsky threw it so well and he had fast receivers and at times, yes he did, he had people open. And he dumped it short and hard and fast. And Georgia came back and won. Do you realize that one run when that kid ran over those people, how big that was? And the goal line stand on a one-inch line even though he gave up a safety right away. 16 to 15, Georgia winner. On the sideline, following Herschel's second touchdown, I smiled at Mike Kevin, who said, I don't want to hear any more about Class A football, referring to the skeptics who thought Herschel's small school background of Wrightsville, Georgia, was a liability. After the game, the media mobbed Herschel Walker, the sweet talker, who set a pattern that would not change for the rest of the season. He took no credit and expressed surprise he had played as much as he did. Well, I was really surprised because Connie Norris and Dynamite Mickey, they did a real fine job. And one while I said, well, I'll probably be over here all night because I didn't realize that I'd be playing because they were doing a real fine job out there. Do you think, as a result of this game, you have gotten a lot of attention? Uh, do you think people might expect too much out of you? Well, I really can't say, but I hope they don't because I'm um, going to get out there and at least at every game and get a, give it 110%, and I hope they expect what I can give, and that's about all I can give. On September the 13th, the Bulldogs made their home debut against Texas A&M, and a Sanford Stadium crowd of 60,150 got its first glimpse of Herschel Walker and saw him and Buck Ballou pace a 42 to nothing victory. Let's listen to Lilton Larry describe the highlights. Georgia leading two touchdowns. Charles Jr. in for Scott. We got a wide slot to the right. Aggies are in a wide seven, really. Buck Ballou sprinting out to the right, looks, and Buck's going to throw. Touchdown! Flag down. Watch the flag. Watch the flag. Amp Arnold in the corner as Buck hit him, and Arnold went up high with both hands. Apparently going to be declined. It was on the Aggies. Amp Arnold caught it in the corner. He got behind Lenny Brown about a step and a half and turned around and got up in the air before Brown could even jump and pulled it down, and the dogs lead 20 to nothing. They felt they had to throw it more today, and man, they have. Don't count your chickens on this one, though. The Aggies move the ball pretty good. 20 to nothing, Georgia leading late in the half. The Aggies finally, with a man sneaking up at nine, ten men on the line. Robinson's kick is up there good. It's 21 to nothing. Chuck Jones of Valdosta, flank wide to one side. Charles Jr. split to the other. 13 seconds and a half. The ball just inside the 25. Puck going to throw. He's going down to the corner. Touchdown! Again, a Georgia receiver, though covered a little closer, turned around to face the ball first. Chuck Jones of Valdosta. Number two flanker turned around to face it, climbed up in the air, and hung on with both hands. Beat the same safety man each time. 27 to nothing. Puck threw a strike. Boy, will that be good for his confidence. Rex Robinson sticking that one up in the air. Good. Seven seconds left in the half. Georgia leading 28 to nothing. And around the conference, they not only will not believe the score, they will not believe what the dogs are doing through the air. Because you remember with a 7 and nothing lead, they threw a 50-yard pass and set one up. Just like with Ballou on the last drive, Ballou completed three out of four. Here's Paul coming out. He completes three out of four. And they moved 69 yards, Larry, in six plays. And more than that, they did it in a very, in a very short span of time. Aggies are in that 6-2 again. We put a man in motion this time, try to loosen that up a little. And we hand it off to Walker in the middle. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. There goes Herschel Walker. There goes Herschel Walker all the way. Man, did he turn it on after he got the first 12 yards. 75 yards. Crowd is gone bananas.
Wow, did he outrun people. Just pull it away. Robinson's kick. Good. On September the 20th, again in Sanford Stadium, Scott Warner was at his All-America best in leading Georgia to a thrilling 20-16 victory over the tough Clemson Tigers. Here's Larry Munson. David Sims, one of America's finest kickers, averaged 47 yards against Rice last week, and he gets it off long spiral. And Scott Warner in the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. Scott Warner coming this way. Touchdown. Touchdown. Seven yards, Scott Warner. The kick was 44 yards from the line of scrimmage, and it hung up good. And Scott broke it straight ahead, a little right, and then cut back across the left. Clemson's in a 7-4. They want to try to block the extra point. Robinson sticks it up. Watch a flag down. Flag down on the play. Now, watch a minute. There's a flag down in the end zone. Georgia leading 7 to nothing. however. Clemson looking at that end by the railroad tracks. Power eye. Everybody in close now. Man breaks motion left. Homer Jordan on third and nine. He's sprinting back to the left. He stops. He throws it in the middle. And it's intercepted by Scott Warner behind the end zone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There goes Scott Warner. 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. Scott Warner down the side. One man going to knock him down around the three. Scott Warner, 97 yards. Scott Warner intercepted a pass a yard in the end zone. Going to his right, Georgia, beautiful pass coverage on that play. As he went left and threw back in the middle, and he went down the right side, Chuck McSwain, the running back, drove him out on the two and a half. He ran 97 and a half yards from the goal line. Dogs in a power high, Clemson's in at 8-3 again. Second down, diving, Buck Blue, touchdown. Buck Blue went over the top. Do you realize we've hardly seen the ball? We're leading 13 to nothing because of Scott Warner, who went 57 or 60, and now he went 97 and a half with an interception to save our hide. Larry, thus far, Clemson's run 33 plays to Georgia's five. That'll give you some indication of how they have dominated the game. Robinson, it's by the extra point. Clemson's in the 7-4 looking at this. It's set down. Rex sticks it up. And the kick is good. Georgia leading 14 to nothing. Dogs will try for a field goal, and don't think this won't be big. Broadway going to hold. Robinson going to try it on the 32. Clemson in kind of a stunted 7-4, and the kick is up. Watch the kick. Watch the kick. Good. Georgia leads 17-10. to 10. Robinson going to try to stick another one up there as he did four or five minutes ago after that drive. It's set down by Broadway. The kick is up. It looks all right, and the kick is good. Robinson, another one. Georgia leads 20 to 10. The clock, as it's running, technically is in favor of the Tigers because they got three plays to win or three plays to lose. So 210, 209, 208 doesn't mean anything. And here comes Gaskey back to throw. He fires. It's battered in the air. And it's intercepted. It's intercepted on the one yard line. Ball was batted in the air. Georgia's got a man hurt on the 19. Ball batted in the air. Jeff Hip got the ball right on the one. It got batted up 15, 20 feet in the air. Jeff Hip grabbed the two more men by him. Got knocked backwards. Georgia's got the ball on the one. 47, 46, 45 seconds. Dogs in the power eye. Third and four. We run Stewart in motion. We pitch it to Herschel Walker. No block, but he's coming wide. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Out of bounds. Herschel Walker ran by a man who got by the blocker, ran by him and came around the left, and from the 7 to the 27, he got 20 vital yards. In the end, it was a Greenville, South Carolina boy, Frank Ross, who tipped the pass that a Columbia, South Carolina boy, Jeff Hip, caught, which sealed the victory. Well, see, I was going back with a pass pattern, and the ball went up and went right through my hands. I should have I should have hit myself, and I saw it up in the air, and I looked back, and I saw the Clemson guy and Jeff both going. I said, Jeff, you got to get it. And when he caught that ball, I mean, it was like a ton off my back. Because if they got a card, it had been, you know, my fault for not intercepting it. And, man, I was, I was happy. That's about as happy as I've been ever. On September the 27th, before a high school band day crowd, the Bulldogs won their fourth straight game, overwhelming Texas Christian 34-3. to 
but the win was costly. Herschel Walker set up the dog's first touchdown with a great 41-yard run, but sprained an ankle on the play. Here's Larry Monson. 3.33 to go in the quarter. Eyes slot left, TCU five-man front. Herschel Walker at left tackle, ran over Mana 45. Another one, the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 10. One man got him roll around the 10-yard line, Joe Vale in. He did the wise thing. He ran through two men that should have had him back out on the 35 or the 30. And the play moved from the 48 where they knocked him down. It is on about the 8-yard line. Barry Young, the other freshman in at the running back. Herschel Walker comes out. Partial limping, by the way. Yes, he's favoring an ankle. Warren, how about Herschel's leg? Well, uh, Larry, he uh, has a bruised right calf. And the right calf on his leg is bruised, but he should be okay. Although, uh, Dr. Butch Mulherry and the team doctor scared about 10 of us to death. We won't ask him what's wrong. He said fracture. You should have seen the look on everybody's face. On October 11th, the Bulldogs began their quest for the Southeastern Conference crown for the 28-21 triumph over Ole Miss. Herschel Walker's sprained ankle kept him on the bench most of the time, but his understudy, Connie Norris, rushed for 150 yards. Here's Larry Munson. Orcade looks at a four-man front. He's back to throw again. One man got him. He broke the tackle. He's back to the left. He stops. Another man missed him, and finally he threw. And it's intercepted on the Georgia 23 by Bob Kelly, and Kelly is down to the Ole Miss 46 or 7. He threw under pressure about 12 yards behind the line, Tim Crow, a defensive guard, all over him. Finally, as he threw, Dale Carver, the defensive end, was on him. He broke away from one man, scrambling around. Really made you think a lot about Archie Manning many years ago. Dogs come up with an interception. He threw under pressure and threw it way shy. One man wide, one man short on a five-man front. Fake, blue looking. He's going long down the left side. He had a man open in the middle. Touchdown, Amp Arnold in the corner. But Ballou hit Amp Arnold in the corner, who was inches in front of Bobo Thomas, a safety man. Norris Brown, the tight end, had streaked down the middle and was wide open inside the 10 as he turned around. Buck went deep down in the left corner, and there was Amp Arnold with a good reaching grab and a tremendous play for the receiver. Dogs are in that 4-3, and 4 back to throw again. Firing over the middle, intercepted by Dale Williams on the 42. He's up to the 50, knocked off balance. He fumbled the ball, and George's hip may have recovered on the Ole Miss 38. Dale Williams at Columbus intercepted, ran down the middle, 14, 15 strides, and as he got hit, it popped forward, and Jeff Hip out of West Columbia, South Carolina, recovered, and George's got the ball on the 38. The defense keeps taking the ball away, but they still don't have a lot of points today, 20-14. to 14. This was a game when All-American Scott Werner became the leading punt returner in Georgia history, but what he remembered was the cheering of the fans as one side yelled Georgia and one side Bulldogs, one side Scott and the other side Werner. I never used to pay a whole lot of attention to it because it was never at the, you know, at the, at the noise level that it was uh, Saturday. I think... Uh, that's probably one of the most exciting moments I've ever had, being out on a football field, was listening to that crowd uh, go back and forth. I couldn't even hear myself think. And uh, when I was out there, I could, you know, I was getting chill bumps, and and uh, the team was so fired up that I don't think I don't think they could have scored with uh, two teams out there at that time. On October the 18th, the Bulldogs enjoyed a field day in Mauling Vanderbilt, 41 to nothing, in their fifth straight Sanford Stadium appearance. The goal line stalker Herschel Walker had touchdown runs of 60, 48, and 53 yards and amassing a Georgia record-breaking one-game total of 283 yards. Here's the mighty Munson. First down, long yardage. Dogs up to the line. Aaron Red, you know all over the ball. Morrison and Blakewood flanking him with the guards. Morrison, Harper are out of tackles. Hand off. Herschel Walker, five. 10, 12, he ran over him. He ran over him. There he goes. Herschel's gone. Herschel's gone. Herschel just went 60 yards. They absolutely had him after the first nine steps, head on. He knocked one down, had to shake another one after 12 or 13 yards, and then broke one after about 18 yards and was just gone suddenly. And it's six to nothing earlier. Herschel went 60 yards. 
Rex Robinson going to try it. Vanderbilt puts an eight-man rush. Got close to it, but the kick is up good. Georgia leading 7 and nothing. First down. They pitch it to Herschel Walker trying to get him out to the right. And he bursts out for five. Herschel's got 10, 15, 20. He's got 25. He's picking up speed. There goes Herschel. He went 48 yards over to the right and then came back to the left and across to the other side of the field to score. You could see the speed mounting after he had gone, probably counting the change of directions, about 20-odd yards. He still had about 20-odd yards to go or more as he was picking it up. 48 yards. Georgia leading 16 to nothing with 9.29 to go in the second quarter. And have you looked at the rest of the schedule? Robinson's going to stick up the extra point, and the kick is good. Georgia leads 17 to nothing. Middle of the second quarter, a little bit later than that. 17 to nothing, Georgia leads. It still looks like rain. Two men split off to the right side. Ballou up to the line, 5 3 setup. Buck fakes the trap. He's back to throw. Looking, he's going to go in a bomb. And there's a man there. Touchdown. Norris Brown, 58 yards. Mark Brown, the cornerback, the guy who got two steps behind him as that big tight end went flying by him. Buck threw a long bomb. Dogs try for the extra point. Scoreboard at the moment having trouble getting it right. And Rex Robinson sticks it up. And the kick is good. Georgia leading 24 to nothing. Vanderbilt's in that 4-3 front situation. Dogs slot to one side. Buck Ballou to Herschel. Walker up the middle. 5, 10, 15. There goes Herschel. There he is. Herschel Walker has just exploded. And on his other run of 60 yards for a touchdown the first time he touched it. This was 53, and again, uh, Dickey had a big hole in the middle, didn't he? They had a real big hole for him in the middle. Just a huge gap in there. Happy uh, Happy and Hudson, I think, primarily may have opened most of that hole. That right guard and right tackle. Herschel just exploded. It was not touched. Rex Robinson's extra point, reaching long and good. It's 34 to nothing. The Vanderbilt defense was no contest for Herschel Walker, who broke Charlie Trippi's 35-year-old one-game rushing record. No doubt, Herschel agrees with Trippi that winning is more important than setting records. I never could tell you uh, what records I ever held. I can tell you how many games we won during the course of a year. Now, that, those things I remember when you lose or win a ball game, but records, never. On October the 25th, the Bulldogs played their first road game since the opener against Tennessee. They went up to Lexington and scored an impressive 27 to nothing win over Kentucky. All-America Rex Robinson booted two long field goals, and Buck Ballou teamed up with Amp Arnold on a school record-breaking touchdown pass of 93 yards. Here's Larry. Rod, we're going to kick. Yeah, Louis, the wind is angling to Robinson's left arm toward that corner where the Georgia fans are sitting. And the kick is coming up. Now watch that ball. It is good. A long one by Robinson, and it's 10 to nothing. Dogs are fourth and ten on the Kentucky 31 with 69 seconds in the half. Broadway's going to hold him to 37. Rex has got the win on his back, and the kick gets up in the air. Is it going to be straight? Now watch it. Yes, it's good. He's got a 47-yarder and a 50-yarder. 13 to nothing. Third down, eight. Dogs in a hole down on their own nine and into that hard north wind. 20 to nothing, Georgia leading. Amp Arnold wide to the right on an eye. Got two tight ends in there. Kentucky's up on a 6-2 now, looking close. Buck Ballou sprinting out to the right, and Buck is going to go to Amp Arnold, and it's complete in the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, the 45, he's down over the 35, and Amp Arnold has a man dive and miss him, and Amp Arnold is down in the corner. Buck sprinting to the right with a couple of blockers, and the play went, what, 90, 91 yards? Jeff Dennis, the left end, Venus Moe, the right cornerback, chased him only one or one and a quarter steps behind him. Amp Arnold on that long bomb. And look at the fans stand up and start to get out. Dogs in a third down and eight situation on their own nine. And Ballou sprinted out to the right six, seven yards behind the line with two blockers. 
cocked his arm and let it fly, and Arnold was at least four yards open down the right side, partially waiting for a ball, and then at a foot race. 91-yard bomb. 26 to nothing, and by the thousands are going out, and Rex kicks it into the wind. Good. 27 to nothing. Kentucky. Against the Wildcats, All-American Rex Robinson seems to always rise to the occasion. He kept perfect his extra point string against Kentucky and throughout the season, never worrying about the pressure. Not like last year when I was getting close to the record and people started talking about it. Uh, there was a lot of pressure, but uh, right now it's just the fact that, I, that it's it could be an important uh, extra point each each kick. And um, right now I'm trying to concentrate more because the first few games I um, came close to missing a couple of extra points. And uh so right now I'm just trying to concentrate and, and, and get each one as it comes. November the 1st marked one of the most highly heralded duels ever in Sanford Stadium. South Carolina senior super running back George Rogers, who went on to win the Heisman Trophy against Georgia's fabulous freshman, Herschel Walker. Herschel won the yardage duel, and Georgia won the game 13-10. to 10. Let Larry Munson describe the highlights of this great battle. Dogs are 4th and 10, back out in the forty. Robinson is going to go reaching for a 50-yarder. Missed a chip shot a short while ago. It shocked everybody. They're going to set it down on a 47. South Carolina, seven men on the line, one man standing and three behind. And Robinson hit a long one. It's long. It's long. Good! He kicked it 57 yards as the quarter ends. Georgia leads 3 to nothing. South Carolina in a 5-3. And they run a trap with Herschel Walker. Got a whole 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. There goes Herschel. There goes Herschel. <laughs> Suddenly, 76 yards. Herschel Walker scores. Hole at the right tackle. Man, did he turn it on when he had to. Suddenly, 9 to nothing in the dog's lead, and the stadium trembles and cracks a little bit. Herschel Walker, 76 yards on a third down six shot off the 24. Rex Robinson puts it up. A man almost got to it. The kick is good. Georgia leads 10 and 51 yards. He missed a short one. He kicks one of 57. Rex Robinson puts it up. A long one. A long one. And it is good. The wind had come up just enough. It only got a foot over the bar. Georgia leads 13 and nothing. I one man split out. Dogs almost again up on a seven-man line. Put the fullback in motion. They pitch it to Rogers. He cuts in. He fumbled the ball. It pops. It's still rolling. Georgia jumps on the ball on the 16. Fumble. Rogers had it popped up in the air. When it hit the ground, two or three bodies hit it. Then it squirted to one side on the 16. And the first red jersey was Chris Welton, the rover back from Atlanta, and then two others. Dogs have got the ball in their own 16. Carolina was about to take a lead. Finally, there was a fumble. Waited for a turnover all day. In Herschel's mind, the South Carolina game was not a contest between him and George Rogers. And as he did all year, he put it all into proper perspective. Well, every game I try to go out there and try hard and... This game here was it wasn't any different. I wanted to go out there and try hard and give the best of my ability and I never did think about George Rogers and Herschel Walker competing because I really knew it wasn't between us to win the game. It was between team and team and that's what it boiled down to. November the eighth in Jacksonville will be remembered as perhaps the most sensational comeback in Georgia football annals. A tremendous fifty seven yard field goal by Rex Robinson and a spectacular seventy six yard touchdown run by Herschel Walker put Georgia out front. But the Gators kept fighting back and finally took the lead midway the final period and they were leading 21-20 to 20 with but one minute and ten seconds left in the game and Georgia at its own seven-yard line. That's when Buck Ballou and Lindsey Scott made history and the Gator Bowl almost collapsed from Georgia fans cheering. Here's Larry Munson at his beautiful best. Dogs on the 27 and a half. Amp Arnold breaks out to the right. Lindsey Scott to the left. 
And Joe Happy walks up over the ball. And Florida comes up into a 6-2 now. But for a little looking at it, going to pitch it to Herschel Walker, try to get him outside. He's going to get five. He's got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. He needs a block. There goes Herschel. There goes Herschel. Lindsey Scott threw one of the blocks. Womack threw one enough on the backer out on the left side. Herschel Walker has just gone 72 and a half yards for the touchdown. He had to turn it on. They pitched him out to the right. I saw Womack hit his man up around the numbers enough to get him by. And then Lindsey Scott threw one down there. Robinson to tie an extra point. Dogs leading early 6 to nothing. Florida rushing from the left side. The kick is up and the kick is good. Georgia leads 7 to nothing. Georgia in a power eye to need three and a half. Buckaloo sprinting out. He's going to throw to Stewart. Complete touchdown. Oh, flag down back behind the line. Watch it. Flag down behind the line. Penalty would have been on Florida. Did you see Stewart turn around and catch that ball? Ronnie turned around. Buck Ballou hit Stewart in the corner. They hit him and he fell in by half his body. There would have been a penalty on Florida. 13-yard touchdown pass to Stewart, the fullback. Down in the left corner, he had a man on him. He turned around and saw it and reached up, turning back to face the passer and went in there with that orange shirt on him. Georgia leading 13-3. Gators jammed in there in an 8-3 to try and block the extra point. Robinson sticking it up in there. Good. Kick is good. 14-3 Georgia. Florida and a stand-up five. They may or may not blitz. They won't. Buck back third down on the eight. In trouble. Got a block behind him. Then a throw and a run. Complete to the 25. To the 30. Lindsey's got 35, 40. Lindsey's got 45, 50. 45, 40. Run. Lindsey. 25, 20, 50. 10, 5. Lindsey's got. Lindsey's got. Lindsey's got. If you want a miracle, we just got one. Incredible play. Lindsey Scott caught the ball around the 40. There were a couple of players that had an angle. He knew that he had to run as fast as he yeah. possibly could. Well, I can't believe it. 92 yards, and Lindsey really got in a foot race. I broke my chair. I came right to a chair, a metal steel chair with about a five-inch cushion. I broke it. The booth came apart. The stadium, well, the stadium fell down. Now they do have to renovate this thing. They'll have to rebuild it now. <laughs> I, this, is, this is incredible. Well, we might call time. We've only got a five-point lead. And uh, by the way, there's a minute and three. And we got to give the ball back to those guys. I didn't mean to beg Lindsay to run, but I had to. 26 to 21 with a passing attack that wasn't working all day. And Lindsay caught it. I think the 25 or 30 or so. I don't remember now, but he was on a hash mark. And he had a long sprint to go, I believe, from the 35 to the far side and down. What did he catch? The 35, Phil? I'm trying to remember. 30? I, it looked to me like it was around the 35 or 40 as Buck rolled to the right. He was looking for somebody to get open, and Lindsay was between two defenders. No timeouts left in the game. You know, this game has always been called the world's greatest cocktail party. Do you know what is going to happen here tonight? And up at St. Simon's and Jekyll Island and all those places where all those dog people have got these condominiums for four days? Man, is there going to be some property destroyed tonight? 26 to 21. Dogs on top. We were gone. I gave up. You did too. We were out of it and gone. Miracle. Against the Gators, Herschel Walker set another record, the single-season rushing record. Scott Werner prayed when Georgia was in trouble, and Lindsey Scott was surprised that he went 93 yards to win the ball game. Yes, sir, I was, I was on the sidelines uh, 
uh, praying all I could. I saw, you know, there was uh, a little over a minute left in the game, backed up on our eight-yard line, and uh, things looked pretty hopeless. But uh, I don't think I don't think anybody gave up. Well, yeah, I was definitely surprised because I was just trying to, you know, concentrating on getting the first down. <clears throat> I think it was like third down and eleven when he called the play. And I was just concentrating on getting the first down, trying to maybe trying to get in field goal range. As I turned up field, you know, I think the free safety slipped down and just gave me some open field and a lot of running. Did the offense ever give up or feel like it was beaten? Well, no, I don't I don't feel like we ever gave up. But, you know, it was like 30 and 11 was like just over a minute to play in the game. And, you know, there, there were a lot of bad thoughts going through our head in the hole. But, you know, with this group, I don't feel like, you know, we ever gave up. On November the 15th at Auburn, the Bulldogs won a hard-fought game, 31-21, before 74,000 fans and clinched sole possession of the 1980 Southeastern Conference Championship and also won the Sugar Bowl bid to play Notre Dame New Year's Day. Buck Ballou played perhaps his greatest game in pacing this victory, but it was a native Alabamian, Greg Bell of Birmingham, who turned the tide of battle with a block kick late in the second quarter. Here's Larry. Georgia fans standing and roaring for their defense. Auburn in a kicking situation. Guys really getting dark and threatening here now. Auburn's kicker, Alan Bollinger, averaging 40 yards a kick coming into the day, looking at a seven-man front. Got kind of a high... Snap it! Block! Block! And it's picking up, driving down in there in the corner. Freddie Gilbert going in the corner for a touchdown. Greg Bell was the man that blocked it, number 20. The dogs have blocked the punt, 43 yards. Freddie Gilbert got that ball and went in. Greg Bell blocked it. Get out of Birmingham, Alabama, a cornerback. He was right on a guy's foot and took it in his gut. And Freddie Gilbert caught the ball and sprinted down in the middle. Suddenly the dogs have gone out there. Larry Bell, Bell wasn't even touched. He just came flying in, and then Gilbert, when he picked up the ball, actually had to kick his way free, and then he got a good block. Ball got a good bounce after the block. Try for the extra point. And Robinson sticks it up, and the kick is good. Georgia leading 10-7. to 7. The clock has stopped with five seconds. Dogs will not have time to get a playoff. There's a big pile up around the one of the two yard line. Georgia wants to get a play off. The dogs recovered on the two. Blue up to the line. Three, two, one second. He's going to get a play off. He's looking. He's going to lob it. Touchdown! <laughs> Just as time ran out, they had recovered a fumble. They stopped the clock to unpile it, of course. And they lobbed it, and Norris Brown caught a ball that was thrown up in the air. They wanted him to jump for it as the time ran out. 16 to 7. Boy, did old lady luck put a big smile down there. They dropped the flag in the end zone, Louis, and Auburn coach had sprinted down there in the end zone. Dog's going to try an extra point. Time has run out and a half. Robinson sticks it up in there good, and the half is going to end. Georgia leading... 17 to 7 on a block kick long run and a lob pass as the half ended when the dogs recovered a fumble and got a playoff. I think it took them two and a half seconds to line it up and Buck retreated his timer and out and lobbed it in the corner and big Norris Brown out of Lawrence, South Carolina caught a ball turning around to face it. It's a good thing he threw it high. He got it over a defensive back. Wild half. Yeah, there was luck in that second quarter for the dogs. The dogs will get the kick from the Auburn side of the 50 on the 45. Auburn was assessed a 15-yard penalty, I believe, because of the coach that ran down in the end zone to protest right after the fumble. The fumble that everybody piled up on, and the clock stopped at five seconds. Georgia coaches have been screaming at their team to get in position, and the dogs lined up and got it off and scored. So now Auburn was assessed a penalty. The dogs will kick off, but from the Auburn 45, they may or may not just try and squib it and recover it, and let's see. That's the way they're acting. All of a sudden, they shift everybody to one side. Auburn shifts with them, and here comes the attempt at the onside kick. It hits an Auburn man. It's bouncing, and a Georgia man dove for it and then got knocked out of bounds. Georgia's got the ball. It works. Will Forge caught the ball. An Auburn man jumped. Exactly 10 yards down the field, off his hands, 
Will Ford's coming off the side of him, almost behind him, caught it in midair as he was falling, and then he got racked. Will Ford's the linebacker, recovered, and the dogs have got it on the Auburn 34. They're inside the 34, about nine inches. Georgia's third down, a few inches shy of a yard. They're just inside the one. Auburn's in that 7-4 again. Buck Ballou with a power eye. And fakes it, and Buck Ballou scores! Buck faked to Herschel Walker, who got racked up a couple of yards behind the line, and Buck just squirted out to his left. As I said a minute ago, it's Buck Ballou, the running back today. 23 to 7, Georgia leading Auburn in these gray skies and that light rain falling. Robinson to try the extra point. The Tigers in that eight man front. It's set down, and Rex sticks it up in there. Good. Dogs leading 24 to 7. Georgia driving, getting a little bit late. Not a lot. You got six minutes in the third quarter. Georgia leading 24 to 7. Dogs come up to the line and they put two men in a wide slot to the right. Auburn now on a 5 2. Buck Ballou going to pitch it to Herschel. No block. He's going to try to turn around and go the other way. Buck Ballou blocks. 22 20. 15. 10. Herschel smells it and scores. Herschel turned around and Buck Ballou threw a great, great block and saved him. And Herschel went on in from the 18. He saw nothing as he went to his left. He curled to the right, and Buck Ballou, of all people, threw a tremendous block and got him the 18 in the corner. When I said he smelled it, you could see his head lean forward. He really did sniff it. 30-7, to 7, the dogs are leading Auburn. Auburn's got eight men on the line, and Rex sticks it up way up in the Georgia stands in the end zone, and you're 31-7. to 7. Auburn in a tight 5-3, now it's a tight 6-2, man in motion to the left. Buck Ballou to Carney Norris. He's got a whole 5, 10, 15. Carney Norris, 50, 45, 40, 35. They pull him down from behind on the 24. Carney Norris blew it up the middle. Carney got 45, 46 yards. Darrell Wilkes, the free safety, grabbed his jersey on the 30 and pulled him down six yards later. Carney Norris just blew it up the middle with Herschel Walker hurt over on the sidelines. Georgia with Carney Norris's great run. What a hole in the middle for Carney Norris. Georgia leading 31 to 21 with 6.49 to go. Perhaps there's nothing sweeter than the sound of a human body making contact with an opponent's kick. And Greg Bell's block punt at Auburn provided the spark that kept Georgia undefeated and brought Vince Dooley his fourth conference championship. All won on the plains of Auburn. Beating Auburn and winning the championship was uh, a great thrill for all of us, but I was particularly pleased for our football team and uh, even more so for the seniors who provided us uh, tremendous leadership. I think that this uh, this team has uh, personified the word team more so than any organization that we have put together in the 17 years that we've been here. This is the most cohesive football team coaching staff that we've ever had, and I'm mighty proud and pleased for this great win over Auburn to clinch another championship. On November 29, before a record-breaking Sanford Stadium crowd of 62,800, Georgia retained its state championship and maintained its number one national ranking by defeating Georgia Tech 38-20. Herschel Walker was at his best in rushing for 205 yards, including a magnificent 65-yard jaunt to ice the game midway the final period. Here's Larry Munson. They may go for a super long one with the ball out on the 40. They may go for a 57-yarder. He's got the wind on his back if he gets it up, though it's a crosswind now, a little bit of a crosswind from his right arm to his left. It's a little bit of a crosswind. I wonder if he's thinking about that. Dawes going to try to kick a field goal from way out. With the ball in the 40, and Robinson sticks it up. Watch the crosswind. Watch the wind. Watch the ball. Good! 57 yards. Rex Robinson. 3 to nothing. Rice kicks off. Tech has a kick from the 25 after the penalty. He uses a win, and he kicks it a mile. Scott Warner on the 6. The 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, and two men get him on the 24. Lawrence Lowe, the free safety. 
Scott Warner, the All-American defensive back, came from his six all the way to the Georgia Tech 23 or 24. Lawrence Lowe, the free safety, who had enough of an angle, finally got an arm shoving him out, and then another yellow jacket climbed with him, too, and the dogs come up to the line. Ronnie Stewart's the fullback. Herschel Walker, the running back. High. Two men split out. Texan, a five-man front. Herschel Walker to tackle. Five, ten, fifteen, seventeen. Down the sideline. Touchdown! Well, he got it back fast. Scott Warner ran it a couple of miles, and Herschel burst 24 yards at right tackle. Pulled a leg away from one man over by the far side, and was close to the sideline. 23 to 7. And Rex Robinson going to stick it up there, and a the kick is good. Georgia leads 24 to 7 early third quarter. 9:43 final game of the year in Sanford Stadium. Then we are in a shootout with these guys. Jones, wide in motion to the left. Try to run a draw with Herschel Walker. He drives off the tackle. Five yards, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Herschel, there goes Herschel. Touchdown! He has just broken the all-time record for a freshman back. 64 or 65 yards. The stadium went bananas because there went Herschel again. A big dog offensive tackle. Jim Blake, what a guard, just shaking his fist at the heavens. Herschel Walker just burst off the tackle to make it 37 to 20. Stadium bananas a little here. Rex Robinson to try the extra point. They set it down. Robinson sticks it up. Good. He's got a lot of points today. Georgia leading 38 to 20. Herschel broke Tony Dorsett's freshman rushing record. Georgia remained undefeated. Vince Dooley won over Georgia Tech for the 13th time in 17 years, and the crowd loved it. On New Year's Day, 1981, before the largest crowd ever assembled in New Orleans, Spain Superdome, 77,895, the Georgia Bulldogs defeated the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 17 to 10 in a titanic battle. Although suffering a dislocated shoulder on his first carry of the game, Herschel Walker nevertheless gained 150 yards and won the game's most valuable player award, and the only back to gain over 100 yards rushing against the vaunted Notre Dame defense during the season. This great triumph earned the Hunker Down Dogs unanimous acclaim as national collegiate champions of 1980. Here are the highlights of the Sugar Bowl Classic, as narrated by ABC's Lou Boulder, followed by Lauren Smith's post-game interviews with the Bulldog heroes. Harry Oliver back on the ball, placed at the 38-yard line. There'll be a 48-yard attempt. He just hit one from 50 yards about five minutes to go. Oliver kicks his block. Kicks his block. Notre Dame falls on it near midfield. Blocked by Greg Bell. Georgia blocks it, and Georgia will take over with a good field position at the 50-yard line. 5.22 left first quarter. Notre Dame leads 3 to nothing. The ball at the Notre Dame 29. We're going to have a field goal attempt by Rex Robinson at the 36-yard line. A, an attempt of 46 yards, well within Robinson's range. He is a fantastic place kicker and field goal kicker. He's high enough and it sails toward the end zone. And it's good! And it is good, a 46-yard field goal. The Sugar Bowl score... Notre Dame three, Georgia three. So Notre Dame now set to receive the kickoff. Ty Barber, number 12 on the far side of the field. Jimmy Stone on the near side of the field. We've got a ball game, 1981 Sugar Bowl. High kick by Robinson. And again, there's a mix-up as the ball bounces free. And it's recovered near the goal line. But the two-yard line for Georgia. Georgia at the Notre Dame one. I've covered 11 games all year. I never saw that happen. These guys have been the deep men all year. But the opening kickoff, we say they had a little, right. little tentative and didn't know who was going to take it. This time it didn't go in the end zone, and Georgia recovered. Georgia knocking at the door. Unbelievable turn of events here with Notre Dame pulling the old you take it, no, I'll take it thing. And uh, they're down on the inside the one, second down for Georgia. Our eye right. 
Give to Walker, dives in. Ursula Walker. Georgia has scored coming off a block kick and then a miscue by Notre Dame. It is 9-3. to three. We have a try for the extra point. The holder is Jim Broadway and the kicker is Rex Robinson. At the 10-yard line, Broadway will take the ball to set it down. Here's Robinson kicking up. And he kicks in about the second tier. And the kick is good. So the Sugar Bowl score is Georgia 10, Notre Dame 3, first down Irish at their 20. Now they give to the first man through the fullback. There's a fumble on the play. Let's see if Georgia has it. Georgia has it. A fumble on the fullback through. Notre Dame has made yet another mistake as John Sweeney, the fullback, fumbles. If Notre Dame is helping them out for the national championship. They are doing a, a, a on the scale of ten, a ten job. Fourteen minutes remaining in the in the second quarter from the twenty-two. Walker, Uh-oh. twenty, fifteen. Walker, ten yard line. Walker out of bounds, and it's getting a little little tough down there as Notre Dame is getting frustrated with a block punt and a couple of fumbles. First down, just outside the ten, so they conceivably could get a. a First down near the goal line. It is first down, Georgia. There's Ballou rolling left. Let's there see he runs. Ballou's going to keep it to the 10. Ballou to the 5. Ballou to the 4-yard line. Let's see where he steps out of bounds. The 4 or the 3. John Krim, the right corner, knocks him out. Second down, 3. And remember that Georgia couldn't get a first down inside the 1. Notre Dame is under extreme pressure here. They haven't been in this position too many times this year. There's a man in motion. Moving to this side. Give to Walker, five, Walker, touchdown! Herschel Walker scores his second touchdown from the three, skirting the right end. George is out 16 to three. Herschel Walker having a feast so far here in the first half against Notre Dame. Rex Robinson will try for the 17th point. Set down. Robinson kicks up. And it's good. So, the Sugar Bowl score is Georgia 17, Notre Dame 3, 4th and 1. Keel rolling around to pass. He's in trouble. Throws downfield. Intercepted! Intercepted by Scott Werner. That may be the ball game. Continually throwing to the left corner. Mastek fell down, but he never had a chance. 256 left. That is three intercepts for Scott Werner. One in the end zone to chop one off. With 2.56 left, Notre Dame may have run out of chance. So it is third and 11, and, and Ballou goes around to his left side, going to run the ball to the 30, down to the 31-yard line. Not much of a gain. They're going to let it run. That's the last That's play it. of the ball game. 22 seconds, 21 seconds, 20. You can hear the beat here in New Orleans. Oh, they're coming. They're they're not coming from the here comes the students now. It's all over. Here it comes over. on There's the no field. Way. It's all over. Those officials might as well just pick up the ball. Somebody's going to grab some kids grab the ball. He's gone with it. Oh, the field has been developed Six by red. Oh, it's wild. This and is great. This is what all the ball is all about right here. Two seconds. One second. Herschel Walker has the name of game's most valuable player to the surprise of no one. Herschel Walker is the MVP of this game. He, he rode for 150 yards. And I, I can't say enough for George. They deserve that Notre Dame had their chance. So they carried Vince Dooley off the field, but more importantly, they carried off Irk Russell, who is their defensive coordinator. The guy really is a swell guy, uh, and you've got to give credit to their defense because really the Georgia defense did what they had to do to win this game. It was pandemonium in the Sugar Bowl locker room where epithets and bards were reserved for critics like Jimmy the Greek and the national media that said Georgia couldn't do what it did. It was a proud day for a proud team. And Captain Frank Ross reminded everyone that Georgia in 1980 was a fourth quarter team. Well, you know, that's what Coach Russell prepares us for, and that's tight games. We never said we're going to blow anybody out. Yeah, we all said the games we won in the fourth quarter because we don't have the kind of team, I don't think, as far as great athletes, you know, that you can just go out there and blow everybody out every week, so you have to be tough, mentally tough, as well as physically every game, especially in the fourth quarter. You know, we've done it every game. This is another example. It was the Kelly brothers, Steve and Bob from Savannah, who recovered Rex Robinson's kickoff in the first quarter to set up George's initial touchdown. Here's Bob's description of what happened on the play. The receiver for Notre Dame misjudged the ball, I think, and he thought it was going to go in the end zone. What happened, it bounced right behind him on about the two-yard line and came back our way a little bit. 
by the time he had recovered to get the ball, Steve was kind of right on top of him, and not the ball came flying out when Steve hit him. And I was right to Steve's left. I came, you know, just right in to scoop it up. But I give a lot of credit to Steve on that one because he made the big play, big hit. For Terry Hogue, it was a big day. He blocked Notre Dame's second field goal attempt. Frank Ross cut down the uh, center and the guard on the wide side of the field, and uh, all I had to do was step over and run, run to the ball. It's great. Uh, you know, when you're a freshman, all you dream about is trying to make a contribution to the team and become a little bit more a part of the team. And when I came in here, I, you know, they gave me the chance to block a field goal, and I wanted to show everybody that, that I could do it. And when I blocked it, and, and uh, it just felt great. It was a warm feeling. And I hope I have a lot more fishmen like that. Rex Robinson's kickoffs were not kicked out of the end zone, as often is the case, but his high kicks caused a big problem for the Notre Dame Irish. I always try to get good hang time, and uh, today the first two kicks that I had were the, the best hang time I'd ever had. Uh, both of them around the goal line, uh, and I think their mix-up came when the, uh, the right halfback um, was supposed to come across and get the ball because it's so high, and the left halfback came up to block. But the, the right halfback stayed and, and came up to block also, so it left an empty spot back there and let the ball hit. Buck Ballou didn't have impressive statistics except for the most important one, which he greatly appreciates. It's the biggest thrill of all. I'd rather not complete a pass and uh, win the game than have a great day and lose. So it is, It's tremendous being a, being a quarterback on a national champion undefeated, and it's something I'll never forget. A lot of folks thought Georgia would lose. Do you think this made the team play harder, work harder? Definitely. We didn't uh, have a whole lot of respect from other people all year long. People said we'd never do it. And I think that made us closer as a team. We came together, and we beat a team that people said we wouldn't beat. So, you know, hopefully we gained some respect. But we, we knew all along we could do the job. We stayed together, and we didn't let all that mess affect us.